Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome uh, to worship as we come to worship our Lord and Savior together this day. I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, Thursday, we celebrated Ascension Day, the day that uh, Jesus ascended into heaven uh, 40 days after Easter. And we like to celebrate it here at St. Philip. So we're, this is Ascension Sunday for us. Uh, and uh, we uh, will hear more about that in our sermon and our readings uh, today. Uh, next week is Pentecost. Uh, so we uh, celebrate the receiving of the Holy Spirit, which is 50 days after Easter. So uh, wear your red next week and join us as, as we celebrate uh, receiving the Holy Spirit. Well, we had a great event yesterday with paint recycling, so I invite uh, Michael Werner up to kind of share some of those numbers and uh, give thanks to all of you and the community. Hello, everybody. I got one word for the little thing we did yesterday for our paint collection. It was awesome. We had approximately 420 cars go through the processing line uh, as a part-time employee of Green Sheen Paint. We thank everybody for their donations. We collected 55 pallets of boxes of paint and it came out to 37, or 38,720 pounds of paint, which we keep out of the landfill, which helps our economy. And the best news is we raised about $6,600 yesterday. So the youth group, the youth group is glad. I'd like to thank all the kids that helped yesterday. Uh, it was awesome. We kept everything moving. Uh, the basic lot lost what the most you had to wait in line yesterday was about 14 minutes. So it was quick. We run them through pretty quickly. So that's all I got. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Appreciate your work and uh, Melinda and the youth and all the work that they did. Uh, Sunday school, I joined uh, Melinda, the kids uh, to uh, uh, focus on uh, uh, stories that they'll be creating Legos and Lego creations. Uh, so uh, join in uh, the uh, fellowship hall for that. And then uh, Deacon Cora is leading uh, a class on ELCA World Hunger as we uh, celebrate the 50th anniversary of uh, ELCA World, World Hunger. So hear about uh, the ministry that they've been doing, that we've been doing uh, over the last uh, 50 years. Uh, prayer shawl knitting group uh, they are going to be uh, meeting this coming monday uh, come and join them at 1 p.m uh, to uh, knit uh, blankets and prayer shawls uh, for uh, those who are praying for those who are in need creative caring quilters are uh, meeting uh, this uh, coming saturday at may 18th so uh, come and join them you don't have to know how to quilt uh, so uh, just come and join conversation, devotion, uh, food, coffee, and uh, they can teach you some things as well. Serve opportunities, uh, come and serve with Habitat for Humanity, either in the ReStore or production shop or on the construction site. Check out uh, those dates and uh, join as, uh, in, as well in uh, many different areas, many different uh, capacities. Softball, we got uh, softball coming up, a co-ed league and our men's league. This year, both of those leagues are going to be in, uh, playing at Foothills at Clement Park uh, Sunday evenings. So uh, talk to Melinda about the co-ed league and Charlie Peterson about the men's league. Uh, we're hoping to start at the end of this month. And then, uh, oh, before I skip that one, uh, grab one of these flyers about pickleball. A pickleball tournament is coming up at June 15th which is a Saturday at 2 to 4 p.m. Teams of two, uh, you don't have to know how to play pickleball by any sorts. Uh, you can come and play. We're going to put people in different brackets uh, based on abilities uh, just so that everyone can have some fun, but a great event uh, raising uh, for our property and raising it to uh, uh, kind of close our deficit. Our next Ken Carroll concert uh, series is coming up uh, uh, on uh, June I'm going to find it. June 19th at 5 to 7 p.m. So uh, they're looking for people who are interested in uh, participating in that and uh, bringing their gift of music. Uh, there's a form online or talk to uh, Kristen Saluzniak. 
Vacation Bible School coming up at July 8th through the 12th for kids at four years old, the fourth grade. So uh, sign up registration is open. Everyone else uh, older than fourth grade can come and help uh, volunteer in so many different capacities from even just 15 minutes on one of the days uh, to being there every day uh, with us. So uh, check out uh, uh, that uh, registration as well. Make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. So again, happy Mother's Day. We give thanks uh, to you and all the care and love that you provide. We want to pray over you and bless you at this time. So let us pray. God of all creation, pour out your blessing on all mothers and those who provide motherly care. You have made them in your image and given them children to love and care for in your name. Bless them with a heart like yours, loving and kind, comforting and strong, nurturing and grace-filled. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have disappointment and heartache and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who have lost their mothers, we grieve with you. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, or the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who have been blessed with grandchildren, we rejoice with you. To those who will have emptier nests in this upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. We give thanks to God for you, your love, your nurturing care. May God bless you during this time in whatever situation you are in, being reminded of God's loving and nurturing care for you and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. Greet those around you. Introduce yourself. Share the peace of Christ this morning.
invite you to turn towards the back of the sanctuary at our baptismal font for our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here, here is our, is our water, water of life. life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice and with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here, here is, is our water, water of life. life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us in our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Acts, the first chapter, and Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. 
After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, word of life. second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. 
You may be seated and invite the children forward for a children's conversation. Good morning. How are you, boys and girls? Good. You know what today is? Mother's Day. Yeah. Why do we celebrate Mother's Day? To what? To give our mothers a break. Oh, all right. There we go. <laughs> to be able to celebrate our mothers, right? To give thanks for them because they love us and help to provide for us and they care for us, right? Do you guys love your mothers? Of course, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, experiencing the love of our mothers helps us also to understand a little bit more about how much God loves us. Do you know that God loves you as much as your mom loves you? God actually loves you a lot more than your mom loves you. Could you imagine that? That's pretty crazy. But God loves us at that much. And we experience that love a little bit today in our reading as Jesus ascends into heaven. But you know what he does before that? He, reveal, he kind of helps the disciples to be able to understand what the Bible says be able to understand the scriptures so that they're able to understand God's love and how much God cares for them and to be able to understand why Jesus came so he to understand that he did and why he had to die and rise again. And then he sent them out to go and proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins. It's kind of a churchy word. To be able to tell people that God loves them and that God forgives them of the things that they do wrong. So even though we do something wrong, God still loves us and cares for us. And so he sent out the disciples to go and proclaim that good news. But he also said, not yet. Wait, that they will receive the Holy Spirit. And we'll hear more about that next week as well. So this day, I'm going to give you... A, a carnation as you uh, leave, but give it to your mom and tell her, thank you for being my mom and I love you. Can you do that? All right, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks for your love. We give you thanks for the blessing of our mothers and all that they do to be able to provide care and their love and support for us as they raise us. So, Lord, help us through the love of our mothers to see your love, to see your grace. We give you thanks for that and the gift of Jesus. Amen. All right, why don't you come up, take a carnation. All right, now you, ooh, now you can really hear me. <laughs> Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, one of the joys that I have in my role here at St. Philip is to be able to be active and participate in the Rocky Mountain Synod. So for the last 10 years, up until last year, I was serving as the chair of our Companion Synod Committee, our relationship, our partnership with our sisters and brothers in Madagascar supporting them, uh, walking with them and alongside of them as they uh, do uh, their work and God's mission in Madagascar. Now I've uh, switched from that to being on the board of Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp, uh, one of our camps in the Rocky Mountain Synod. Uh, we've got two camps. Uh, Sky Ranch is up uh, north, kind of in the Poudre Canyon area, uh, west of uh, Fort Collins, about three hours from here. And uh, then we have a camp south of us being Rainbow Trail in uh, the San, uh, and, uh, San Isabel National Forest, uh, about three hours south uh, past uh, Canyon City and just west of Westcliff. And so I had the joy this week to being able to go to Rainbow Trail as a part of our board meeting. We have one meeting on site to be able to talk about the ministry being done there and preparing for camp for the summer. And uh, we have had a great partnership as St. Philip with at Rainbow Trail over uh, many decades and such a joy to be a part of this ministry. 
We've been sending kids uh, who are going into second grade all the way uh, through high school uh, to camp at their summer camp, going on retreats with them. Our men's group in the past years have gone down the Rainbow Trail uh, to have uh, their men's retreats, and we bring them here to help us run our vacation Bible school. So such a great ministry. I've got some pictures to kind of show you the beauty of Rainbow Trail as it sits at about 9,000 feet just below that in the mountains. But seeing the beauty of God's creation. I tell you, getting there, our group talked about kind of the what we call the exhale. You get there and you're just like, ah, just that, that calmness, that presence of being in creation, uh, being in God's uh, nature, and uh, being in that presence of God, uh, that certainly kind of brings uh, God's uh, presence uh, into your life as you come into uh, Rainbow Trail. Well, we all know uh, that we got rain uh, this week, and I'm preparing for our board meeting, uh, leaving Thursday afternoon, and Melinda's like, I think you guys are going to get snow. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, two days ago, I was told to prepare for rain and pack for rain and layers and all of this. I should check the weather before I pack my bag. Sure enough, we're going to get snow. But I didn't realize how much snow we'd be getting. So I got up there at 7 p.m. on Thursday, and it started, and it was already snowing when I got there. And uh, then uh, we just keeps coming and keeps coming. And the next thing I know, there's 18 inches of snow on the ground. (laughs) We lose power at 9.30 that night, and we just roll with it. And so, you know, May snow, wet and heavy, and it just keeps coming and coming. So we go to bed with 18 inches of snow, and we wake up with about another 18 inches of snow, getting about three feet of snow between 7 p.m. on Thursday and we left at about 2.30 on Friday. Just never stopped snowing. Well, the power goes out and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. This will be an experience. I know Dory's story and others uh, who have uh, lost power because of the wind a couple of weeks ago. And you just kind of figure it out, right? Well, I'm in a setting where I don't quite know what to do. And so, you know, it's just... All right, well, we'll hope it'll turn back on and we'll see what we do. Being Rainbow Trail, being on a hill, they've got water that runs into it, but then a pump that runs the water up into the rest of camp. So we have no water because there is no electricity for the pump. So we're just kind of in this unknown and uh, we figure it out. We grab some candles uh, and thankfully we've got enough you know, heat and insulation from the snow to keep us warm uh, that night. Well, a couple weeks, many weeks ago, right after Easter, I preached a sermon about how I imagine the disciples after the death of Jesus being in this complete unknown, having no clue what to do, that their master, their leader, their teacher has just died. And that's kind of how I felt within this. But then uh, we kind of go along, we hear the resurrection story and uh, hear how God reveals God's self uh, to them and uh, the joy of uh, the disciples when they see uh, Jesus. But they're in this upper room, uh, locked in this upper room in fear of the Jews. But in our text for today, we hear a complete uh, different experience of the disciples. Now, I'll give you some context. We are in the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter. And it's this old chapter that talks about the resurrection story of Jesus. And the chapter ends with our reading today of Jesus ascending into heaven. So it talks about how the disciples or the women go to the tomb and find it empty. They go back and tell the 11. And then Peter runs to the tomb and finds it empty. And then we hear the story of Emmaus of the two disciples walking to Emmaus where a stranger comes with them and they're talking about Jesus and all of this and they don't realize it's Jesus until Jesus breaks bread with them in Emmaus. Then the disciples run that seven miles back to Jerusalem to the rest of the disciples to tell them and it's at this point that our reading starts. 
well, maybe just a couple verses before, that Jesus comes into the house where they're at, showing them his hands and his side, uh, and uh, eats with them, showing that he uh, truly has risen from the dead. So then we have uh, the story of where we're at today, of Jesus speaking to them and teaching them one last time, saying, these are my words that I spoke with you, to you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms that must be fulfilled. So then what does Jesus do? He then opens their minds to understand the scriptures, to understand everything that they have read as Jewish people of how Jesus is that fulfillment. And he gives them the gospel message and tells them what their job is. He says, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning in it from Jerusalem. And you, disciples, are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. They go out as far as Bethany, and Jesus blesses them and ascends into heaven. Well, this is where we really experience a different group of disciples. So what do they do next? Do they go back to that upper room and lock the door in fear of the Jews as they wait for the Holy Spirit? No. They go to the temple. They go and return to Jerusalem and continually worship God. It says they go back from Jer to Jerusalem with great joy. Every day in the temple, blessing God. Continually in the temple, blessing God. This is worship. This is uh, the purpose of what we do in this place. In response to what God has done for us. In praise and thanksgiving for God and all that God does and continues to do through Jesus. That we too continually come to the church to bless God. We come to give thanks and praise to God, worshiping God for God's love for us, for God's care for us. It's that Jesus, uh, that God sent Jesus to us, who suffered, died, rose again, so that we may be forgiven of our sins, saved by God, so that we may have life, that gift of eternal life. So this is the life that we live as God's people, being filled with the Holy Spirit that we'll hear about next week, that God continues to reveal the scriptures to us so that we may come to believe, so that we may trust and have hope in God and God's love, having confidence in this love and grace that we're able to live a life of God, continually coming to church and blessing God. So they have their mission. We know what we are to do as people of God. Much different than the experience I had at camp saying, what in the world do we do now? But thankfully, we had people there who knew exactly what to do. Immediately, they grabbed candles. Uh, they went down to the pump house and filled five-gallon buckets of water so we had water to drink, so that we had water to cook with, so we had water to flush the toilets. Thankfully, they knew exactly what to do. Having propane to continually be able to cook those meals and to be able to keep us warm with the fires in the fireplaces. 
being able to shovel and plow the roads and shovel and plow the roads and shovel and plow the roads <laughs> so that we could get home at that afternoon. So people of God, through your faith, know that you have the knowledge to be able to live as people of God, to be able to believe and trust God because of God's love for you and God revealing the scriptures to you of all that God has done for you. So may we, out of our faith, in response to our faith and God's love and mercy to us, continue to come and bless God each and every day, each and every Sunday, to give thanks to God for his love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us stand and join in our hymn of the day, a hymn of glory, let us sing.
Let us proclaim our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Abiding God, we pray for the leaders of nations to work towards peace and unity, especially Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Palestine. May they commit to their respective ceasefire resolutions and create peaceful ways forward. We lift up all college campuses experiencing protesting over the conflict in Gaza. Help bring healing and peaceful resolutions to work towards peace. God of grace. We lift up the following prayers from our children and youth of St. Philip. Healing Father, we pray for Aunt Sharon, who is fighting breast cancer, for Nana Trudy, Father Eric, Mom Karen, Brother Ethan. We pray for all of our moms who make sacrifices for us, and we give thanks for all the women who love us. We pray that we will do well in our final exams at school. God of grace. Hear our Comforting God, we pray for all of our confirmation students and youth who are growing in faith together. May they continue to love and serve you and share your good news with all. We pray for students and teachers in these last days of school. Protect them, keep them safe, and help them seek you for wisdom and strength. God of grace. Healing Father, we pray for comfort to all those who are challenged with needs of body, mind, or spirit. We especially lift up to you, Larray, Carolyn, Flo, Bob, Phyllis, Carolyn, and all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Be seated as we uh, receive our offering. Uh, we give you thanks uh, for your generosity, uh, for your love, and uh, your gifts.
May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection and ascension of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in uh, my life, in your life, in forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this bread and in this wine that Christ comes among us, giving us that gift of life. Come, receive him for all is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated. I invite uh, those who are going to receive a communion in your chair, your pew, and those at home uh, to get out your communion at this time. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So Son 
the body and blood of our Lord at Jesus Christ that strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Speak to God. Hallelujah.